Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your weekly reading. Can watch it early on so that you can navigate this uh, energy or this week or, you know, just navigating the events of this week with a little bit more grace and with a little bit more, um, I want to say, having the proper knowledge so that you know how to navigate and, and outmaneuver this energy. When I was shuffling the cards for you, I saw a scene in the desert. So it's like um, just a lot of sand, mounds of sand, and just, you know, sand shifting with the winds. And um, what looks to me was, like to me was on the ground, there were whirlpools. And, you know, like it, they're sort of like um, riptides or whirlpools that you see in the ocean. But this is um, in the desert. So there are a lot of them. I see six of them, especially on the ground in front of you and I see you trying to you know avoid them so it's almost like you know avoiding landmines avoiding obstacle courses trying to find your bearing and trying to find your way without falling into these whirlpools um, so that's what I'm, I'm sensing here and if we're using that imagery to kind of uh, dictate you know what's coming in store for you for this week um, first of all the um, one thing that came out in the spread here is um, the need to not cut corners, okay? If we're going to do something properly and we're going to do something the right way and if we're going to cover our tracks, if we're going to um, make sure our plans are, pr are foolproof, then we're going to have to do things the right way. So there's a huge emphasis here on not cutting corners, on... Um, having all the information in front of you and then making a decision by factoring in all the information that is available to you. So this means, you know, just because you see something, you're like, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to disregard it. No, you have to take everything into account and you have to make an informed decision based on every piece of information that you, um, you have in front of you. So factoring things in not omitting things, not cutting corners, taking an additional, you know, few minutes, few hours to do the, the, the research so that you can fill in the knowledge gap so that you have full information, full disclosure before you make a decision. Um, I do see conflict coming into the picture and this is like institution, so possibly in the work front, in the family front as well. What I have here is the hero front. And this is institution, usually um, educational. Um, it, it, I, I'm getting a really big um, work energy with this, okay, where things are very hierarchical and um, uh, there's like a, a chain of command. Every decision needs to go up the chain of command. And then every decision, like um, ev every decision has to go through an expert. Every decision has to be screened out and vetted before the person on top can make the decision. When it's in the reverse position, it's it's almost like getting really frustrated with this bureaucratic process because everything has to be looked over by higher ups, everything has to be delayed, and just there there's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of people with differing agendas and it's it's slowing down the process. But once again, I feel like, yes, it is a very archaic, um, time-consuming, possibly inefficient process, but I feel like it needs to happen because all the people that are looking at a situation before they can approve it, before they can decide on the best course of action, they are experts in their field and they're taking, they're, they're making the decision from their perspective. So you have to respect the process and you have to, you know, allow for this, no matter how slow and frustrating it can feel at the time, you have to allow for the, the natural process to unfold. This is a card about disagreement here. We have the Five of Swords, and the Five of Swords is uh, winner takes all. Okay, lack of compromise, wanting to make like these executive decisions without consulting other people, and it's all it, it, it's it's sort of like one person 
leaves with all of the jewels on their sword and then the other person is left with nothing. So in the spirit of compromise and in the spirit of you know trying to do the right thing, it is really crucial for you guys to understand that these protocols and these processes are placed or put into place because there's a need for it. So that one person doesn't make the decision only based on their self-interest and essentially screw, screws everybody else over. Um, so we have to kind of allow for this process to naturally unfold, allow for the checks and balances to kind of um, fall into place so that people don't end up in this situation, okay, where these choices are made almost like in a vacuum. And the, the, the ramifications of that would be one person commits an act of like grand theft and leaves everybody else in the cold, okay? So I feel like um, th these processes are put into place to prevent that situation from happening. So there is a, a major power struggle that I'm feeling here, push and pull types of energy between one person with their own agenda and another person with things that they want to see happen. And there is a lack of compromise. There is a lack of mutual understanding. There is a lack of being able to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes so that we can understand where they're coming from. This is a conflict that I feel... Um, where two people cannot see eye to eye with one another. They essentially have the same goals. They do want to sail away from this. You know, so like you and another person, you both, believe it or not, have the same goals, have the same understanding. This is the Ten of Pentacles, building a legacy for yourself, leaving something behind, um, stabilizing your financial future, having financial backing, having a financial foundation on which you can build especially a family, a relationship, uh, a work situation. So you both want the same things. And you both are at a point where you both can collaborate and communicate and compromise in order to reach this really uh, exalted space. But egos are getting in the way. Egos, conflict, um, communication, back and forth, banter, that kind of escalates and exacerbates a conflict okay so there's a lot of ego issues coming into the the uh, picture that's disallowing two people from being able to build together and being able to see that you know what we actually have the same goals we have the same agenda so that's what i'm, I'm feeling here and um, if this is an ongoing conflict, I feel like it is coming, it is uh, re being revisited, or it is returning into the present moment. We have here the Ten of Swords in the reverse. So this is the reemergence of something that we thought was dead and gone, and now is making a comeback. Okay, so I'm feeling greatly some, some secrets being uh, coming forth, some... Um, major revelation, something being unearthed, okay? So it's almost like, um, it, it's almost like, and this is not literally speaking, this is just figuratively speaking. It's almost like digging up somebody's grave, and you know, there's a tombstone with the person's name, and everyone went to the funeral, and everyone watched the person in the casket being lower, lowered into the ground, and you know, everyone puts on their flowers, and um, the, the groundskeeper shovels dirt onto the coffin. It's almost like unearthing, like digging up the casket, opening it up, and then realizing nobody, there, there's no body in there. So it, once again, that is a figurative, you know, like a way of explaining this. It's not literal, but I feel it's almost like something like that, a, a sleight of hand or a situation that everyone knew to be true. But then... For this week, it's not true. Somebody kind of did a switcheroo or somebody did a, like a sleight of hand trick and then the situation is not what it seemed. All of a sudden, the situation is not what it seemed. And so you're given all of this information and you're, you're, you're trying to unravel it to, to figure out what exactly happened, what is the motive behind that, why would someone do that, who would be able to pull that off. Um, 
how could somebody pull you know the wool over my eyes like that how could i how could i have believed that how could i have you know why didn't i know so so i'm seeing all of these questions and i feel like it's such a dramatic week like the events that unfold and it and i feel like it happens in succession too it's not just one major big revelation it's sort of like events culminating leading up to this major major big revelation so i i'm a believer of signs signs from the universe signs from your spirit guides and i feel like you were hit with many different signs along the way leading towards this major revelation so i'm i almost feel inclined to say like you know this should not come as a surprise to you but that's what i'm feeling it's almost like all the signs were there little by little moving you towards this big revelation or preparing you for this big revelation and i feel like maybe the signs were ignored Maybe somebody was, um, it's like the red herring distracting you from other things. And, and um, in the process of being distracted, you were not able to see the signs or you were not able to, yeah, th there's a, a big sleight of hand energy here where I feel, I feel like it could come from you, Gemini's, or it could come from your environment, okay? But there's something here where it's almost like being so tunnel vision and so focused um, on some aspect of things and we're missing the whole picture. So going back to that first image that I saw, um, I feel like it's, it's shifting sands, okay? It's almost like that mirage in the desert. Uh, what we think is our destination we're heading towards the oasis and we're, we're we're trying to find refuge away from the heat and the 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 scorchiness and just the uh the dryness of the desert heading towards this oasis and we feel like it's in front of us but then everything turns out to be a mirage and then we're left with you know these whirlpools of sand that you have to kind of maneuver your way through so i just see see everything as a series of events that that allows you to see that everything is very fluid that everything is like shifting sands under your feet um, needless to say there is a big need here to be firmly grounded okay the decisions that you make the things that you're planning and whatever it is that you're planning to do I feel for some of you talking to a boss, talking to a boss, and the boss is not able to give you anything definitive. Like, we don't know yet. We, we need to get the projections for next year. So we're not going to be able to, you know, approve that raise, um, open up that position, um, decide on a course of action, finalize the contract. So everything is like on hold and everything is just like contingent upon other things. So I, I feel like if that's the case, you might be frustrated. You want to move things along. But once again, everything is built on uh, shifting sands. And the desert landscape, it changes too with, with the, the weather. There could be, you know, a very severe windstorm. And it changes the, the, the mounds, it changes the, um, just the landscape. So what was there yesterday might look very, very different the next day. And so if you're used to one way of doing things, you're going to have to quickly adapt to these shifting sands and do things a different way. And it's going to be frustrating because when you're in the midst of this, it is not your place to be able to ask these questions. Why are we switching protocol? Why are we changing our objectives? Why are we changing our agendas? And I would say that, you know, the, um, the reason why we have to do this is to accommodate. Accommodate some 
recent big changes to accommodate and make room for new things. New things might be better. Or to just accommodate the, the climate that we're in. So I, I feel like it can feel a little bit frustrating. I see for others too, this is in regards to your um, significant relationship, okay? There's definitely a situation where things were building up and I see like concentric circles, small, medium, getting bigger and bigger. So things are culminating in your love relationships and I feel like many of you have been with somebody or have, are staying with somebody that you're no longer in love with. And you have flirted with the idea of, you know, divorce, separation, um, hightailing it out of there are the words that I'm hearing. Like, I don't want to be involved in this anymore. Emotionally, I'm, I'm spent. I am no longer emotionally invested in it. But the financial burden if you were to get divorced, is really, really, really big. It's almost like, so let me show you the cards. Ten of Pentacles, family. Ten of Cups in the reverse. Ten of Cups in the reverse is like no longer seeing eye to eye with the other person, no longer in love with the other person. But here's the catch. Five of Swords, winner takes all. So if we were to proceed with divorce, separation. One person is going to take everything. So I'm feeling here there's a lot of paranoia regarding finances, regarding money. Um, and I feel for some of you this can play out in a divorce proceeding, court proceeding, not wanting to um, not wanting to leave a relationship because of financial considerations. Um, for those of you who are traveling, I do see travel and movement. Uh, you're obsessively planning over it. Where am I going to stay? What stops am I going to make along the way? Do I have the financial resources? So those of you who are dealing with that, you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You're going to sail over your financial woes, okay? And um, all of it is happening because you're taking the steps and you're doing your due diligence to plan these things. So I definitely see people traveling with a family member, uh, with family, and I feel like it's gonna be an expensive trip. It's expensive, but you will be okay because I feel like, you know, if there's a will, there's a way, the universe will intervene and help. Um, there's a, a certain amount of luck here too, I feel, like necessary luck in order to get things off the ground, okay? So it is a, um, a lot of it has to do with you putting in the effort and the work in order to do your due diligence, in order to do your research, in order to plan things out and lay out a blueprint for yourself. And so the universe is helping you, is um, sprinkling some lucky, you know, stardust on you to make sure that this venture is going to go the way that you want. But the universe would not have intervened if you just, you know, coasted and not do your your portion of the work. Does that make sense? So I feel like there's definitely a certain amount of divine protection and luck coming through to, to help you through this week. Okay? Um, I'm also seeing as well, I, I feel like for those in relationships and... Um, that you're where you're no longer in love, okay? And you know when you're no longer in love with another person. You might care about the other person, but the love is not there anymore, or you feel like you have outgrown the relationship. And you almost feel like it's time to, to go on. Like it's time for me to move on. But I feel like many of you fear leaving this relationship because it's sort of like the devil that you know, fearing the uncertainty, fearing the whole process about, you know, I have to go out there and date again. Dating is so awkward. And what if I don't find anybody as good as this person that I have right now? Um, what if, you know, I'm too old and I can't find anybody? So I, I see some of you with, with that element as well. Um, what if people are after me only for my money? 
or even what if what if I can't find somebody that wants the same things as me so I, I see this element about staying in a relationship because of the comfort and the familiarity and having all these questions as well like fantasizing about you know bachelorhood the single life and wanting to go out there and possibly even go after another person but not being able to to take that leap of faith just yet because you're you, you have a lot of self-doubt because you're dealing with self-doubt um, I see many of you too having trust issues it's not prominent but I feel like it's it's one of the the way the reasons where and I, I feel like the trust issue stems or ties in or exists in conjunction with what if someone is only after my money? You know, what if somebody's only after my fame? What if somebody is using me kind of like as a, as a stepping stone for their career? Or they're only using me to help them in some way? Or they're only using me to boost their status in some way? So I feel like some of you have a, a lot of fame associated with you. And you're weary about dating because you don't want to be used. You don't want the other person to take advantage of you. Um, there is a person that you are going to be communicating with. You could be single or coupled up. And um, I feel like there's a lot of fantasies. I'm seeing like, you know, fantasizing about another person and I'm seeing a lot of electronic communication. Uh, whatever barriers there have been when it comes to communication, when it comes to trying to... I feel like somebody is communicating in a very cryptic way that's hard to understand and honestly, it could be you, Geminis. I see like 60% it being you and 40% being the other person mirroring you. So if you're not communicating clearly and succinctly, then the other person's going to give you a dose of your own medicine. If you are communicating very, very clearly and succinctly, clearly yes or clearly no, then the other person is going to mirror you. So in order to improve the communication here, it's in your it's like the ball's in your court to try to initiate more honest thought uh, thoughtful and meaningful types of communication so I feel like there's a lot of electronic communication between you and another person um, I'm seeing I'm seeing a fire sign so Sagittarius Aries or Leo uh, and I'm seeing the fire sign here with the page of wands it's not so much the page energy that I'm seeing but more like a person that is a little bit more heart on their sleeves, flamboyant, fun, playful. So you're giving them, you know, um, confusing messages. I feel like they're going to dish it back. And so we, we have a cycle here that we kind of need to break. And it is within your control. And it, the, ball, the ball is pretty much in your court to be able to do that. I see many of you, too, getting more physically active. I see more lifting weights. I see more like, um, I see somebody bending down and, you know, like squatting or even doing weights or doing repetitions like, um, I, well, I, I see like uh, weight training, strength training. I'm also seeing a lot of people um, doing a lot of swimming as well, which is, uh, it's, it's the winter time or, yeah, it's the winter time in the United States right now, so... I don't know how that would work. I guess they would heat up the pools. But I see a lot of swimming. Um, the last thing that I want to mention here is... Um, um, I, I feel like... Somebody exists in your eyes as being too good to be true. And you have a little bit of trust issues. And you're seeing this person as like, it, it's, it's almost like you don't trust, you don't trust this person. And I feel like you have to really 
ask yourself, you know, have they ever been deceitful? Probably not. They, they haven't. Have they been forthright and, you know, honest with me? I, I feel that they have been. But your, your trust issues are clouding your judgment. Okay? And I feel like you want to come forward to this person. And I feel like you are doing a very, you're doing this kind of like um, beating around the bush with the other person. And I, I just feel like you should communicate in a thoughtful manner, in a meaningful manner. And, you know, forge ahead with that connection. Okay? There's a lot of things being revealed when it comes to emotions, when it comes to travel plans, when it comes overall to people's feelings, your feelings. But I feel like, honestly, the ball's in your court. Everything is, um, the, your, your free will is, is it's clearly imprinted on the spread. Meaning, to me, it sounds like, you know, you have the ability to change the course of, of um, this week. You have the ability to mold and shape and manipulate this energy. Okay? I'm going to leave it at that. I hope the reading is helpful. I know that we're touching on many, many different topics, but I feel like it's, um, it's all encompassing. Many people will deal with this in their work environment, in their love life, with family, etc.